Welcome back, you guys. We are here at the B. Dawson Show, and I have Brandon Dawson here, and I guess I'm kind of co-hosting this with him, and oh, I'm very yeah. excited love, to be you here. You love the topic that we're going to be talking about right I now. I do love this topic. It's one of it's, This topic has changed my life. This is the conversation about personal, professional, and financial goal alignment with the business. We just came back from our first executive summit. Yes in Miami where we had over $150 million worth of businesses there. Uh, all of them looking to 10X their businesses to go to a billion five. That's what the room had earmarked their 10 year growth objectives yep. to be. And one of the big things that we talked about, you introduced the concept and the principles is the PPF process, personal, professional, financial process of aligning individuals' goals with the business objectives. And today we are going to be giving you three tips on how to have this PPF conversation. It's actually going to be four because I added a tip. Oh, there's going to be four tips? Excuse me, we're going to have four tips today. <laughs> and how I would like to frame this to start off is this particular way of conversing is going to be how you have this conversation with your team members. This isn't your own personal goal setting process. And the presentation I gave, the way that I described it is it's you can have a me process, but then right now we're going to be talking about the we process. So not your own goals, but your team's goals and how to how to engage and align your team with the goals of the business through their team's PPFs. Yeah. And you know, what was funny is I asked everybody there, how many of you have intentionally aligned your individual team members goals with specifically your business objectives? And nobody had thought to do it. And hey, no worries. That's true for almost every business we've ever worked with. Mm. The, the, the miss there is the statement I made that really caught people's attention is businesses don't move people. Um, if your business has to move your people, then you're already running into roadblocks. Yeah. You've got stress, constraint, friction, anxiety, resistance in the business because now you're trying to push your people to a, achieve the goals mm -hmm. of the business. If you want your people to pull the business to the objective, so they're all lifting together and pulling. You have to align their goals with the business goals because business owners think that when they hire someone, they're gonna be as excited about the business owner's passion as the business owner is. Mm. It's the entrepreneurial dilemma, right? I am an entrepreneur, I'm passionate and excited about this thing that I started and everyone should be just as thrilled as I am. <laughs> but the truth is, once you start scaling the business and adding people, they're passionate about the thing that you hired them to do. If I'm an accountant and I'm passionate about being an accountant, I'm not looking to do all the things that you do as a business owner. Conversely, mm -hmm. most business owners don't make great accountants unless they're a business owner that owns an accounting firm. <laughs> but when you look at all aspects of the business, I think the epiphany for these business owners was all these people were hiring for whatever reason, the struggle is they're not as passionate about accomplishing the goal or doing the thing that I am. Wait, so what's the full quote? So you, you, I think you said half of it, and then you said the other half a little bit later. So the full quote is people. Businesses don't move people. People move businesses. Love that. That sets up the why behind even having a personal, professional, financial goal conversation. I think more so than the tips that you're going to share but really building the value as to why this is important, like why this is the catalyst for business change and how it's the only way to scale your business if you're going to do it through people is like the huge mind change, mind shift that people have to go through. And then having the conversation becomes easy, but it's really establishing that, well, okay, why am I even having this conversation? Is this just something that I'm checking off the to-do list? Or is this something that's intrinsic to why the business exists, why the business was started, why the business serves its customers in the way that it does. Like the overall mission and vision of the organization should be tied into the personal, professional, financial goal planning process of the employees, of the team members. And they should be doing it, and it, not just with their existing team members, but this should be part of the interview process. Think about this. Mm -hmm. People that own businesses think too tactically. Mm -hmm. So they think they need to hire somebody to do a job. They don't think big enough. And the conversations, therefore, stay small, mm -hmm. which means that they then hire small, ambitious thinkers that just want to get a job. Mm -hmm. So think about I'm going to give you two different conversations. Okay. You tell me which one you think sounds bigger. Okay. Conversation one. 
Um, I'm growing my business. I have this job option or this job uh, position available. And Natalie, I'd like to talk to you about this. And I'm looking to hire somebody that wants to work in my marketing department. And I'm looking for somebody who can write copy and do some ads and maybe go call on some businesses. Um, is that something you'd be excited about doing for work? Yes. Great. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to create my website. I want you to create some flyers and I want you to buy some media and start doing that job. Sound great? Sure. And I'll pay you minimum wage or I'll pay you 20 bucks an hour or 25 bucks an hour or whatever. And here's what I expect from you. Okay. Now, you're going to hire somebody. But think if the conversation went like this. And, and think, you're my first person I'm hiring for marketing. So I've now hired you to do a job and go off and do it. Now, imagine if I hired you this way. I said, Natalie, here's the deal. Today I have one location or I have one business. And that business is doing $2.5 million in revenue. So it's time that we hire somebody to run our marketing. I notice on your resume that this is something you're passionate and excited about. The thing is, my business objectives, my personal goals for my business is to take it from two and a half million to 20 million. Mm. So although I'm interviewing somebody for marketing today, what I'm really looking for is a future leader that can run a $20 million marketing company. Wow. Right? Or do marketing for a $20 million company. Yeah. And the skill sets you have seem to be in alignment with that. But what I want to make sure is that you're fully aligned with the business. You stretch yourself beyond your, your current abilities. And the way we do that, and the person I'm looking for is someone who will go to evening classes or do online programs or be willing to push themselves, maybe do body language programs and be able to go out in the community and represent us at the highest level. And that's the person I'm looking for when we're $20 million. The question I have for you is, does that sound interesting to you from a career path? Absolutely. So what I wanna do is talk to you about the process in doing that. Of course, mm -hmm. I can't expect you to do that today because your resume says you've never done it. Mm -hmm. And you may or not may not be comfortable going out and speaking in front of 50 or 100 people. Is that something that you feel you could develop into? Absolutely. So we're gonna write that down, not as what I want you to do today, but an expectation I have for a de development path, mm -hmm. path. Because I'm not looking for people just to come in and do what they need to do right now. I'm looking for people who can grow mm -hmm. and scale the business. And at 20 million, you might have to be responsible for other people doing the things you're doing today. Mm, that makes sense. So in the process of building this program out with you, I want you to document all the things you do, mm -hmm. why you do it, mm -hmm. how you're doing, what the impact is of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna show you this process and this system. But in order for you to grow into this job and learn all these skills, because I'm going to have to send you to project management, maybe online programs to learn how to properly project manage. Is that something you're comfortable with? Yes. I'm also going to have to send you to a body language online program. Like you have to learn how to hold yourself in front of rooms of people if you're mm -hmm. going to speak and represent the company. Is that something you'd be comfortable with? Sure. I'm also going to send you to a communications program or online program and train, have you trained so you can do those things. Is that something you're comfortable with? Yeah. Great. So what I want to do is align your personal, professional, financial goals mm -hmm. with what we, what we have to do today, but where the company is going to go over the next 10 years mm -hmm. so you can grow with it. Mm -hmm. Does that excite you about this opportunity? It does. So now I'm going to get into this. So this is the important part to entrepreneurs. I want to know how much you're thinking about your future. I want to have transparency into your ambition. Mm -hmm. See, people who aren't ambitious or don't think about their own future why as an entrepreneur would I assume they're going to be worried or thinking about mine? Hmm. Well, what I love about how you frame this conversation is you really think about it from the standpoint of me as Brandon Dawson, the CEO of the company, the owner of the company, needs to be as inspirational in the interview process as you would need to have if you were being the interviewer. So if you were sitting across yourself in that conversation having you know brandon talking to brandon like you would do everything you could in order to inspire that same type of person who is like you in order to come into the organization it's not just your typical standard oh here's what the job description and is and what would happen if do. i was doing that with a candidate for employment and i was painting this picture and mm -hmm. showing them with absolute clarity this is where i want to go and here's the kind of person i'm looking to eventually and they were sitting there going that sounds interesting. Well, yeah, that's like, that sounds fun. That's how you can filter that out. If you are the one that's 
coming at it with that much enthusiasm, but the interviewee back can't even match that or just kind of did what I did and saying, yeah, sure, and and isn't able to articulate how they're aligning with that or how they've always wanted to take project management or how they've always wanted to do body language class because they're nervous to speak in front of people, but they would like to be able to. Like if it's not matched back and you're just telling them what they need to do, it's not going to be a long-term fit for your organization. People think and hire too small mm. every employee that they're trying to hire. And the first thing I'm going to say is hire for the $20 million company. Mm. Talk, is this your first tip? This, this is, is tip my number one. Tip number one. Tip, think tip, tippity number bigger. one. Think bigger and present a larger picture and then tell people how you want them to pick the perfect person at 20 million that you'd want to be working with. Mm -hmm. What would be the things that you'd want them to do? And then work backwards, find a mentor, or find somebody who's done it mm -hmm. and put that plan together because then you're hiring big. Mm -hmm. You're painting a picture of something big because mm -hmm. if you're going to sit with somebody and do what we talked about at the beginning, beginning of the show, their personal, professional, financial goals, mm -hmm. painting this bigger picture with a whole bunch of, here's what I need you to do today at the highest impact possible. Here's how I need you to do it, but here's all the things I'm gonna want you to go learn and do. Mm -hmm. That's expanding the mindset of the person you're interviewing mm -hmm. as well. And if somebody's sitting there going, I don't really wanna do that, and I don't wanna do this, don't be caught off guard. People hire someone and then three years later, like. I've got the wrong person because they won't do these things. And if you talk to the employees, like we've interviewed thousands of employees, they'll say, they never told me they wanted to do those things. Had they told me that, I would have never taken the job. Mm. Well, I also want to caveat what you're saying. You're saying, okay, I, I need to hire somebody that's capable of doing essentially 10 times more than what their job description or their pay is, is Well, they have to have the mindset. To exactly. So, so that's when we were in this course this last week, somebody said, well, it's kind of the chicken before the egg because do you pay more for better experience, better employees, and then have them train and do these things? Or do you pay less, but then train them, but then you have to be the one that really is hands-on with it? And I, I think what your conclusion was is saying, you can pay somebody less money if you don't have the budget for a $200,000 COO or VP of ops. You can pay somebody less, but then you have to be able to so clearly articulate as the business owner where you're taking them, how you're going to grow and develop them, and how they can make not only that 200000 mark, but when the business is 10 times what it is, you've shown them the picture for blowing their minds with more than what they ever thought their income goals would be and, and what would be possible. And you're setting expectations. So do I want to talk about the $20,000 I'm going to pay you this year because we're just starting? Right. Or do I want to talk about the $20,000 that can grow to $200,000 and here's what I would like the perfect person to look like in 10 years. And the more I keep talking about that, the more I'm setting expectations with you. Mm -hmm. Then we get and if you have current employees who are thinking small because you're talking small, mm -hmm. like I want you to do this job and I want you to do that job versus here's where the business is going and here's how I'm tying you into it, then you're always going to get small thinking, small doing because mm -hmm. you've established that as a business owner. So now let's get to the point of aligning individual interests with the business objectives. Yes. If I was hiring you, I would say, Natalie, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the workforce or not because, and we have found 99.5% of the time across the spectrum of 10,000 people, every time we ask this question, every single person says, no one's ever asked the question. Mm. So if you want to create an impact on the people that you're working with and have them trust you and follow you and work hard for you. I think you should say that again and like really like, what, what are you what are you trying to get them to do through the PBF process? Like say that one more time because yeah, so, it's easy so, to miss. Yeah, so here's the deal. If you have never asked the people who work with you and for you, what their personal, professional, and financial goals as it aligns with what the business is going to do. Because remember, when I started this, is that the passion of the entrepreneur is not matched to the passion of the people that are working for them. Their passion is the things they're interested in. Mm -hmm. To the extent that you show them how they can accomplish the things they're interested in mm -hmm. with the business objectives, you're going to get more attention, more horsepower, more energy into their performance mm -hmm. and growth in that area of the business. Yeah. So when it comes to actually having this conversation, so let's say as a business owner, you realize as you're listening to this, oh shoot, I've never asked any of my employees what their personal, professional, and financial goals are. What would your second, we've already done one, what would your second tip be to starting that conversation and having it? Well, first and foremost, 
I want to, before I do that, I want to make mm -hmm. sure that people understand there are natural mm -hmm. filters you can create. The first filter is if I talk about the big picture and you say, that's not the job for me, yep. I need to go to the next candidate until I find somebody who's excited. Mm. But if I find a candidate who says, you know what, I would love the job as it is today and I am willing to do these things over the next five years to grow into a bigger position and I'm, I'm excited to do that. Now I got to say to you, hey, if you're going to put that kind of energy and effort into growing with us and learning all these things, I need to make sure that I align your interests with the interests of the business. Like where the business is growing, you should win when the business wins, mm -hmm. especially if you're pressing and pushing yourself in your own personal development, because that way you'll feel great about what you're learning in applying it to the business. Mm -hmm. So what I want to know, Natalie, has anybody ever sat down with you and conducted a personal, professional, and financial goal planning of the things that you'd like to accomplish over the next three to five years as it pertains to your pursuit in your career? No. So if I could help you find a short-term, mid-term, and long-term goal that you'd like to accomplish in three categories, personally, mm -hmm. professionally, and financially, and show you how I'm gonna fight for those goals, for you achieving those goals through what the business is doing. Mm -hmm. So that when the business wins right here, you've won that goal. Mm -hmm. If I align your goals with those business objectives over the next 60 months, so mm -hmm. take a one year, a three year, and a five year time horizon, mm -hmm. and we're fighting for you to win those goals, mm -hmm. will you feel better about what you're doing here while you're working? Yes, of course. And so my job, is to show you, first help you identify what those goals are. And you know, nine, what I was saying, 99% of the time when we ask that question, every employee has said no one has ever sat down and helped them mm -hmm. put their goals together. Now, what happens when I spend time with you? And rule number one, take you to lunch or to dedicate 20 minutes to 30 minutes to personally have this conversation. So I think this is, we have a whole list of tips for you guys and Brandon just gets so excited about this topic that he like can't even help himself with the role play and you're so good at role play. The tip that we had written down was most people when they think about, okay, doing a PPF process, they will just email somebody and say, okay, what, Fill do you this out. what are your goals? And the tip is, no, you have to have this conversation in person, you have to have this conversation with the same level of intensity that you're bringing to this role play right now of this is the vision, this is this is the mission, and I want Here's to bring you into these yep. things, and I want your goals to be able to align with this. So tell me about your goals. Helping somebody identify their own goals. Mm -hmm. That inspires people. Yes. And when you identify those goals and they're inspired, I now have a hook mm -hmm. for why you come to work every day. To mm -hmm. the extent I can show you how you can accomplish that goal mm -hmm. and you do what you need to do, we're going to make sure you get to that goal. Yeah. And so when it comes to the second tip of in that conversation while you're having it in person, but somebody, let's say, let's role play this and say the... You ask me what my professional goals are. So Natalie, are. Uh, in the next, so your short-term goal. Mm -hmm. In the next 12 months, what's something professionally that you'd like to accomplish? Well, I would like to go to a training. I'd really like to be trained. And oh, by the way, we just created this whole plan of training. So of these things that I'm going to eventually need you to be an expert in, mm -hmm. which one professionally is the most interesting to you? Uh, I don't just training. I just want my skills to get better. I just want to be trained. Well, that's great. Except for remember, we're moving from where we're at to where we want to be. So we have this body language program that we can send you to. We have this, this project management program. So on a professional basis, when you take this list of things mm -hmm. that we talked about that are important to the business, professionally, which of these things and by when would you like to be trained in this area? What's most interesting to you? You know, I've never really thought about it. I just have, I, I know I want to get better. I, I, uh, I guess, I, I mean, body language might sound good, but I, I think like as an accountant, I think just being trained in anything would be better. Perfect. Let's go to a different subject. Let's talk about financially. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I know you. The point of yeah, this guy is, so, so is, is to clarify what they're going. So they're in person and you're having this conversation. Most people, when they're first having this conversation, don't have any sort of context as to 
what specifically it is that they want to achieve. So it's your job as the business owner, it's your job as the hiring manager to clarify, to really clarify, okay, it's not just training. You don't just want to get better. Those are good things. And that, that's something that you should be sussing out in the interview process if they're goal oriented or if they're not. But you really have to get clear on what it is specifically that they want to be Yeah, doing. so what would happen there is if you didn't pick something, I'd say, all right, well, let's just forget about that for a minute. But that's something I want you to come back. I want you to think about this. Well, I was hoping that you were going to say, why would you need body language if you're going to be an accountant? <laughs> I know. I, I, um, I, I wanted to make a Mike, a Mike joke, but Mike's not here. Mike Halloran. So I would go, if somebody is vague in a, in a goal planning, I would go to something that is interesting to them. So I'd say, how about this? Let's pick a financial goal. If you could have one financial goal that you'd like to achieve in the next 12 months, what would that look like to you? And what do people usually say with that? What their financial goal is? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll help you out. Some people say I'd like to pay off my school debt, or some people oh, say one like day any, I'd like oh, to buy I a house. Oh, just that there was one specific kind of example. The, 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 what you're, what's happening here by not answering is this is what really happens. Like when you pause and you think, people don't know. They don't think about this stuff. Yeah, I think this is where you and I might disagree on this. Like people, the whole point of doing this in person and clarifying is to get people to talk about that. And the, so for, for then you to have the opportunity to paint this bigger picture and to create clarity around the goals. Because most team members, when you first have this conversation, as you said, they've never been asked these questions. They don't know. With so this, giving them the time point. to be able to kind of articulate these things is going to be something that will help you make the conversation more Yeah, and successful. here's the long term. So so it's really important because we, I'm assuming we already painted the picture of where I'm taking the company, right? I've already had the conversation. We're going from two to 20. Mm -hmm. I've already talked about the things I want this position to evolve into. Mm -hmm. Now, the third part of this is me sitting down and tying your goals into it. So I'm assuming you already have the vision that we're gonna grow. Right. So now I'm gonna ask you personally, professionally, and financially, let's identify short-term. Yeah, and I just, it's just sometimes, you know, these conversations, like they're, I just don't want you guys to like go into a PPF conversation, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, thinking that you're gonna be able to share the mission and the vision, and then all of a sudden, there's gonna be so much clarity with the team member that you're talking to around, what it is specifically that they want to do like there's going to be this like back and forth of okay tell me more about this and asking really really good clarifying questions and listening listening very like well. this so so once you have somebody identify what their goal is mm -hmm. then what i have to do is say i'm going to design the business mm -hmm. to show you how you can accomplish that goal and it's really important to your point i started with professional goal you may say I don't know, right? You might not. But what about personally? Is there anything that you'd like to accomplish? And how many people have said to us, well, especially current employees, we, we've changed lives with this because people say my whole life, like single moms or single dads, all they wanted to do is be able to take their kids to the coast for a weekend. So what we do is then ask them, well, what would that cost you? We want to get really specific. Mm -hmm. And if the business accomplishes this by you doing your piece, which is that, mm -hmm. and this was to happen, would we would you feel we had a great year mm. what would you say as an employee yes yes so now when i have more of the yeses from you mm -hmm. like this is the thing that you've always wanted to accomplish short term midterm long term mm -hmm. and i'm showing you how we can accomplish it through the business which we have a whole program for this so we're not going to get into every detail on the podcast the point is when we explain this to business owners it was like an epiphany mm. they realized we're not doing anything to actually align our team members or future employees mm -hmm. with the bigger, broader perspective of what we want to accomplish. So this is one of the tips that you actually have written down is that you, it's not just having the conversation in person and then clarifying as the business owner, you then have to align what those goals are of your team members to what the business can That's do. That's where you gotta be smart in your accounting and your modeling and your, your business planning, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. exactly correct. Because you can't, because all these goals have to be converted to something in the budget that would accommodate or pay. If you, I'm gonna send you to training, I gotta be able to afford to. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna do a PPF and send you to the coast for three days with your family, um, I got to put a budget to it. It's going to be, I, we have the employees come back and do that. And we've sent employees, oh, big, big time. People make such a huge mistake. They spot bonus. Mm, yeah. I said no more spot bonusing in our company about eight years ago. Just, it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. If you're going to spot bonus somebody, it has to be to a PPF. Yeah. So we have employees that do amazing things to help us in the organization. And when they do, sometimes we spot bonus a PPF mm. because 
Look, you want to recognize effort. If you're a strong leader and you want to grow your business, you have to recognize your team's effort, but you have to reward results. You don't reward effort. Mm -hmm. You reward results. And to the extent that I'm hitting your PPF goals for you, you're going to put more energy. You're going to think this company's got my back, right? I've got its back. They have my back. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you look, and we've had people, we've sent them to Europe for like two weeks and things that they've always dreamed of doing because of what they've done for the business, the organization. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the tips. The tips. Let's talk about the tips. All right. Well, so as per usual, I think we started with four tips, but we're probably going to end with eight because what you mm -hmm. just said is another tip, like spot bonusing. Don't just give a $1,000 check for something that – your team member did that went above and beyond what they were supposed to put that thousand dollars towards the home renovation that they're looking to do or the trip to Disneyland that they want to take with their kids. And the only way that you can know what that thousand dollars should go to is by having this PPF conversation. And, uh, and how many people do you know that that talk? We've been talking about it for years, but how many people have sat in front of rooms of 200 people, even customers we work with, because we have all their employees on this program, too. How many sit there and cry because of the impact somebody made on their life? Uh, I've I've witnessed this hundreds of times. Yeah. I've witnessed hundreds and hundreds of times with just the individual team members, the team members of the practices that we manage. Actually, like this, this conversation, this way of engaging somebody is entirely transformational. You talk about the three T's, transactional, transitional, transformational. This is a transformational way of doing business. This is how business in 2019 should be done. This is what is getting millennials interested in working for businesses. It's not just the traditional hierarchical way. It's how do you allow mutual success to make all tides, what is that, all tides? All, raise lift? all boats. Yeah, like yeah. How, how does everybody win instead of just the people in the ivory tower winning. This is the way to do it. The PPF conversation is the way to do it. One of your last tips on this, uh, once you have the conversation uh, that, we that we wrote down and talked a little bit about is you have the conversation, you align the business objectives, you as a business owner have to follow up. You have to follow up, you have to follow up, you have to follow up. The, the worst thing that you can do is have this all of this dynamic conversation, really be connected with somebody and then never bring it up again. So you have to continue to maintain this in your weekly one-on-ones with your team, in the quarterly reviews you have with them, in their annual performance reviews. Like the PPF have to be the thing that you're continuing to talk yeah, about. Yeah, because they're not going to say, if you're sitting there saying the business is struggling and we need to achieve this kind of result, that's what I need you to do. The conversation is much more powerful when I say the way we're going to help you get this goal is here's where the business needs some support and help, and here's how you could impact that. And and when we have that result, here's what you're going to get out of it. And the more I can get granular with that, and the more you feel like we're tugging together mm -hmm. and we're pushing together, the more I've got you aligned with the business. And the thing that business owners don't, don't understand is that, and Gallup poll came out, out of 100 million people, one third are aligned with the business and inspired to move the business. Two thirds are either not aligned or or intentionally actively fragmenting, disengaged. actively disengaged from the business. The best thing you can hope to do as a business owner is actively engage every one of your team members. And if that's not an intentionality, then you can pretty much assume you're not actively engaging them. 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. So here's the tips. We've got more than four, so we're going to give them all to you. First of all, think bigger. Mm -hmm. Always think bigger. Have a bigger picture. Number two, do the personal, professional, financial planning in person. Use it as an opportunity to connect. So when you're sitting with somebody and needing them to do something, you're always tying their goals into it. And the, it is so unbelievable to help people identify their goals and to realize and teach them how they can identify goals and then achieve them. Mm -hmm. That's a job as a leader. Create mm -hmm. confidence in people and show them you care. Yes. Number three. Make sure you have clear short-term and long-term goals. Tie in the short-term, 12 months, to the long-term, 60 months or five years. And do intermediate goals too so that we can pull goals forward and accomplish them faster. Also, align the business. You have to align the business objectives with the attainment of the business goals. Can I add one thing to this? Oh, oh, And then mm. you have to to follow up yes. and use the goals with the business objectives so everyone's on the same page. Yes, the, another one that you put in there was the spot bonuses. That was another tip. I think that was our sixth tip. 
when it comes to aligning the business objectives with the attainment of the goal, one thing that can be overwhelming for business owners is saying, I don't know how I'm going to allow enough growth in my business for this employee who's a phenomenal performer to make the 20,000 or the 50,000 that their their current position doesn't allow and doesn't have that elasticity in. And wh one thing that we teach with this process is you get to flip the conversation by being able to say, employee or team member, what ways can you generate X amount of revenue for the business to be able to create yourself within opportunities that exist within this business, the $20,000 bump you need to pay or the $50,000 bump you need to pay. Like come to me with ideas as to how we can grow. You know, you're teaching people to be thinkers. Exactly. Of Instead of feeling like, oh, it's my fault. I'm a failure for not being able to grow it. Like, no, like people on the front lines that do have great ideas, but that not just are ideas that they're wanting to add as things to do in their job descriptions, but things that actually contribute to the overall performance and overall growth of the business. Do you remember when we were at the 10X boot camp and somebody says, well, what do you do when you just have a front office person working for you? And I jumped up and I'm like, yeah. there's no such thing as a just. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the capacity to create a bigger impact if somebody's teaching them and inspiring them to do it. We have had people that have taken a job as a receptionist, entry level, no college education, and they have grown to being a VP over eight years in the organization because they align their goals, they fought for their goals. And when you see somebody fighting for their own goals and they believe I'm fighting for their goals with them, mm -hmm. they're gonna stay engaged mm -hmm. versus I have the business I want to succeed mm -hmm. and then I hope that you care enough to show up every day. Well, and it's your job to create more financial impact for me to be able to do what I want with my family. No, put the power in the team members' hands and say, you can create opportunities for this business to grow. For every $100,000 that this business grows, you get a piece of that after, you know, we pay the operating expenses and the things that we need Just to show pay. them what they need to do. Like, yes. Like, look, we've had people that have gone, you, you got all these employees and then, and you're like, well, I need to go out and have somebody do community outreach programs to create more flow so my business can grow because this is how everybody wins. The business grows, I get more customers, I convert the business. All of a sudden someone goes, well, hey, I lead choir at church. I also do all the presentations at church or for the school. And I'm very comfortable with that. Then you're like, okay, well, half the equation. I got somebody that understands my business. I got somebody who's comfortable in front of people. Mm -hmm. Now I just need to coach and train them to talk about the things that are relevant to the business and then let them go out to the community and do lunch and learns and do do you know things in local whatever community events Grass and programs roots. grassroots stuff just mm -hmm. crush it will what was the person that wrote in uh, it was mark mark braun he says did this with a front office staff she wanted to earn like a provider so she got a temp license and has done 150k production for her first two months <laughs> amazing there you go so here's somebody who's just yeah. A receptionist who says in the personal, professional, financial goal planning process, I want to grow my career to be like a provider mm -hmm. and be a provider. So he created an incentive. She went and did the things she needed to do to get her proper licenses. And bam, out of nowhere, the business generates an extra $150,000 in revenue. It's not It's not rocket science. It's not hard. It's, it's just figuring out creatively how to leverage the team, leverage the just employees look if they're just employees why are they there to begin because with? because like, you're just a business owner right exactly <laughs> exactly they were hired you're there for a reason you're adding value what are those things and how can they triple or quadruple the value that they're bringing through those positions that's how you grow as a team so mm -hmm. if you want your business to grow and you want to take the stress and the constraint and the friction out of your business be much more intelligent about how you're communicating and aligning the people that you need their help with mm. in order to make it happen. And then and, and then there's one one other point here, which I just forgot what it was. Oh, I was just gonna say, my way of rephrasing that would yep. be just flip the script, like flip it to make it work for you in the business instead of providing stress and pressure and friction and this weight on you, like figure out a different way of engaging so that you bring people towards you that want to collectively help the mission and vision of the goal, of the organization. Like that's at the bottom line of this. There's process that can get in the way. There's things that you need to do in order that, that get in the way. Oh, I have to create a compensation plan now. Oh, I have to provide all this clarity. Oh, I need a mission and vision. Well, 
No, it's at, at the end of the day, you're caring about people in order for them to care enough about you and your business to make the business grow and for everybody to collectively win. And here's a big, huge, I'm going to end this on a huge, huge, huge tip from the B. Dawson Show. If people can't identify their goals that they want to accomplish, mm. if they can't identify their goals, if they're not willing to put any energy and effort into clarifying and identifying their goals, yes. they are not going to put any energy or effort into clarifying or identifying your goals. Mm -hmm. Conversely, why if I was a high performing employee, that knew I had the confidence I could do great things, mm -hmm. would I ever work for a business owner that didn't care about my goals and didn't share their goals with me? Mm. It's two ways. If you wanna grow a huge business and you wanna take the stress out, align the people with you and with the objectives and then get them pulling the business to success with you. Love it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Natalie, for your guidance, assistance, and wisdom. On Thank the you for B. having Dawson me. Show.